need to do something about my tea collection. It has gotten out of hand. <laughs> it has been out of hand for a very long time. I need to at least organize and try to declutter. We all know this is difficult for me. I have tried many times before, never very successfully. <laughs> But I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give it another go. My goal for this week is to go through my entire tea collection. I will share everything with you, of course, so you'll get a good overview of everything I have at the moment. Reorganize, see if there's anything that I can let go of, because I'm sure there are some teas in there. I have so many. I'm sure there are some teas that I haven't touched in a really long time and that I'm maybe ready to let go of. Today's pick, by the way, while we're at it, is jasmine green tea with rose petals, and it's absolutely delicious at the moment. Floral green and white teas are absolutely my favorite. The way I used to do this was to pull everything out and go through it all at once. With baby and everything, I'm not sure that's the best course of action. I do think I'm gonna do it though. I am at least gonna pull everything out of that drawer because I just, I need to do that. So um, I think that would be a good place to start. This is everything that came out of that drawer. And honestly, it doesn't look that bad. Before we go through this, there is one crate here full of coffee stuff. Some extra coffee stuff, like our pour over holder thing. And then we have some cocoa powder and of course my beloved Granko, which is a hot chocolate mix. And I think all of those things can go somewhere else so that we can have this one drawer be just tea. Also, we are about to buy ourselves a coffee maker, a coffee machine. We just realized that the way we make coffee now, which is pour over, it's just not a very convenient way to make the occasional one cup of coffee for one person. So yeah, we're gonna get a coffee machine and we're gonna have to store all of the stuff that comes with it and the machine itself. We're not gonna keep it on the counter because we don't drink coffee that often. Um, with the machine and all the stuff that comes with it, we're gonna have to store it somewhere. And I do have a place in mind and I think that this little crate of coffee stuff could go in there as well. We also have some sugar cubes that I have had for years and years and years and years. And we always forget that we have them. So we never offer these to people, to guests when they come over. We don't sweeten our drinks at all. When we have guests over, we just set out this little sugar pot. So we never actually use the sugar cube. So I think it's just time for me to get rid of these. They're just taking up space and getting kind of gross by this point. So we wouldn't even serve them to guests anymore. Alrighty, let me just start over there. I have a few of the Sostrena Grena teas. This is a store chain around Europe and they sell some loose, loose leaf teas that are really, really good and very inexpensive, like surprisingly so. So I have three of those, two of which are amazing. One was disappointing. They all come in the same bag because you can have scooped them into the bag yourself in the store. So I'm not sure what these are called anymore, but I know one is the green tea with apple and quince that I mentioned in a video recently. One was a gift from someone, so I'm not actually sure which one that is. No, it's definitely a different one though. And then one is one that I bought myself, um, which is a black tea with bergamot and rose, I think. But that one, it smells incredible in the bag, but once you actually make it, the extra flavors just get lost and it tastes like black tea. So I think I'm actually gonna let this one go. First declutter. Now, here's another disappointing tea. This is a, an organic rooibos tea with apple and pear. No, pears and peaches, sorry. Pears and peaches. This was a souvenir that I bought in Sweden. Sounds great in theory, but once again, the flavors just get lost once you make it and it just tastes like straight up rooibos tea. And I'm not about that. So I'm afraid this one I'm also gonna have to say goodbye to. Chai Zanzibar, one of my favorite teas. This is a rooibos with vanilla cardamom and then a bunch of other spices. Incredible, love this one. And uh, Spring Blossom, one of my favorites. This is a white tea, peach jasmine. Oh my gosh. This is a white and green tea with jasmine, uh, peach aroma, I think, and hibiscus flower. Oh, incredible. Definitely one of my faves. This is straight up pure aniseed by way of lactation tea. Along the same vein, here is Magic Mum, which is also a lactation tea. And I'm pretty sure I've 
almost used that up, but while there's still some left, I will slowly make my way through this. It's really good as well. Then we have two of these Wilderland herbal teas. I have a lot of herbal teas left because I wasn't able to drink them for like a year when I was pregnant. Both of these are harvested in the Netherlands. Kind of mixes of, I think, mostly native plants as well. Both really nice, actually. I'm going to keep these. This little container is where I keep my tea flowers. And it's full to the brim. You know what the thing is with tea flowers? They are impressive, but don't usually taste that good. <laughs> it's a little ball like this that you drop into hot water. And as it steeps, it's made of tea leaves and flowers. And as it steeps, it kind of opens up into this flower shape inside your tea. It's pretty cool in theory. <laughs> Once in a blue moon, we use one. Um, this is ginger and lemon herbal tea. It's almost out, but this is one that we drink a lot when we have a cold. I think we're just gonna slowly use this up and then Reuse the tin because it comes in a really nice tin. Black currant, loose leaf tea. I don't make this one very often, but it's actually really nice. I think this is a nice one for winter. You see, that, that's the problem. I have so many, I tend to forget about some of them. And I think I, I should put this one back into rotation. Irish breakfast tea. This is coffee strength stuff, <laughs> which is why I haven't used it yet. Um, this is the type of tea that will make me tremble. <laughs> This is the tin where I keep my jasmine tea, has been replenished many times. Jasmine tea is one of my favorites. If I have to choose one type of tea to drink for the rest of my life, it's probably gonna be green jasmine tea. So yeah, I keep refilling this tin with fresh batches of jasmine tea. Here we have a black lemon tea, and I think it might be time to bid this one farewell because I've had it for so long and I've I rarely ever choose it over all the other teas that I have. I think maybe this one is gonna go. I'm gonna keep the tin though, because that's really pretty. And then here we have a lotus tea. This one as well, it's just one that I've kind of grown tired of. So maybe it's okay to let that one go. Keep the tin. This is a masala tea. And this was a souvenir that some friends brought for us from Nepal, I'm fairly sure it was. And this is another one of those that smells really good, but comes out tasting pretty much just like a black tea. Like the, the spices aren't prominent enough, but I might give this one another chance. And if I don't like it, then I might just make one cup of this to test it once more. And if I don't like it, then I'll just let it go. Here is a herbal tea that was actually sent by a viewer. And when she sent it, I was just pregnant. And I don't think I had announced it yet, but it contains all kinds of um, herbs and spices I couldn't have while pregnant. I had to wait until after to try this, but it's really, really good. This is a witch's brew tea. It's a different one from the witch's brew tea <laughs> from like 15 years ago, for those few of you who have been here since then. <laughs> but um, it is very, very nice. A very good herbal tea, so I'm definitely hanging on to that one. Then here I have three or two, two jars of some kind of dried herb. This one doesn't smell good anymore. I think this has, this has gone off a little bit or at least lost its flavor. So I think I'm gonna let this one go. I'm not entirely sure what it is either. Yeah, this one as well. I think this, I remember this used to smell different. So I'm gonna repurpose those jars. This is a fruit blend. Once again, a souvenir that someone brought for us. Really lovely, very, very nice. Definitely keeping that. Then there are some little jars with little remainders <laughs> of teas. So here is like one serving of Christmas tea. Oh, right, yeah. See, I have this thing. When a tea is themed, I feel compelled to only drink it around that you know, certain time period. Oh, this is really nice though. It is really good. Do I hold on to this for like four more months for this one serving of Christmas tea? Maybe I will, maybe I will. This one, party tea, green black tea with some uh, sprinkles. I remember how this one used to smell and doesn't smell like that anymore. Okay, letting go of that one. I am actually clearing more than I expected. Here we have a rooibos chai. I think it's time I just use this up. This might be the last of my original 
which is Peru. It is. Yeah, this one, I think I should just keep somewhere else because at this point, I'm not gonna drink this. This is a, this is a core memory. <laughs> I'm gonna keep this one in my sewing studio and just smell it every once in a while. Oh, okay, I remember this one, yeah. Oh, really lovely, it has some lavender in it. Okay, so this is a nighttime blend. It's really hard, the ones that aren't labeled. So I've gone through so many teas in my lifetime, but I remember this one. Again, it's one or two servings. I need to just, in the next couple of days, and I always say this in my tea declutters, that's the worst thing. But in the next two or three days, like in the course of this week, I have to just use these little ones up. And it's gonna free up a lot of space. What's this? This is the tiniest, tiniest jar ever. And the tea inside literally doesn't smell like anything. I'm gonna let that one go. I can't identify it. And I'm fairly sure this one is empty. Oh, this is an old matcha tin. Okay, why did I keep this? I probably like the tin. Does anyone else do that? Just collect empty jars and tins and things like that? I need to let go of this. I never actually cleaned out the old matcha. All right, that's all the loose leaf ones. We're actually doing quite well. Then I have a few um, bagged teas. We have one, let me actually grab it. This is our box of bagged teas that we use when we have guests over, serve up this so we don't overwhelm them with our gigantic loose leaf tea collection. But also I sometimes just want to not have to deal with all of the mess of loose leaf tea. So we do keep a changing assortment of bagged teas in this. So I'm keeping everything in here. Anything that doesn't fit in there, like when you buy a box, usually not all of it fits in there. So all the rest of it ends up here. So these are usually the newest teas. So we have this Clipper um, apple cinnamon infusion, which is amazing for winter. Really, really good. I've had this a few times. It's cinnamon, lemongrass, hibiscus, rosehip, licorice, apple, chicory, and lemon. Then the Clipper breezy strawberry green tea, which is just green tea, strawberry. Also incredible. Uh, we have this blood orange tea, which also contains some other <laughs> tea bags. This is, we have the Take on a Granny's Fruit Secrets and some chamomile tea. Nettle lemongrass tea that I bought when I was pregnant because this is a safe herbal tea that I could drink unlimited amounts of and there aren't many of those. <laughs> so there are a few bags left, but these are like loose inside the box. They're not individually wrapped, so I have to keep the box as well. And then there's this tea from a new company that grows tea plants in the Netherlands. So I wanted to try that out. And this is their nighttime blend, which is mostly a herbal tea. That actually brings us to, oh no, this box. There's still a box remaining. Let's see, this is mostly tea making stuff. I'm considering getting rid of this one because it's plastic and I'm trying to eliminate anything that is plastic and comes into touch with hot food or drinks. We have this one now, which is um, stainless steel. So I'm more comfortable using this one. A tea sample, another single use thing. I might just put them on the counter so that I remember to use these up <laughs> this week. <laughs> tea strainers, little tea bags to use with the loose leaf tea. Some more tea samples. And then this contains all of the teas that we used as wedding favors. <laughs> We're still slowly but surely using those up. So this is Roybos Earl Grey, really, really nice. And then here, I believe we use these as gifts at some point as well. Champagne truffle tea. We'll come across that one when I bring out the jars. So apparently I decluttered more than I thought. 
because now there's a lot more room in here than I expected, which is fantastic because it would be great if I could actually keep all of the coffee stuff in here as well and just have a warm beverage drawer again. We do currently have this one crate of coffee and when my capsules arrive, maybe today, tomorrow, at some point this week, I'll see if I can fit them in here as well. A few more things that I would like to do. These bagged teas, the three of these, don't really fit in this drawer. They're a little bit too tall. So I would love to get those into a different container if I can. Uh, these two as well. I just, I don't really like keeping my teas in these bags that they come in. So if I can put these into some jars, that would be great. I managed to decant those Sostrena Grena teas into these tins, which is fine because they were unlabeled to begin with. So it doesn't really matter that they're, you know, in the wrong <laughs> tin now. And I would love to get these into some glass jars. And I do have those two glass jars that had those herbal teas or those just dried herbs. These, so maybe I can fit those in here. That would be great as well. And then I could label these, but yeah, we're doing great so far. It's already looking much more manageable in here, which is fantastic. <laughs> Part two, the other tea cabinet. This is where I keep my loose leaf teas. We keep our loose leaf teas. <laughs> nice, beautiful glass jar collection. So I think it's time to take all of them out, see what's in there. Although I suspect we won't be getting rid of much in here because these tend to be my favorites, repurchases uh, and stuff that I have bigger quantities of. So let's just take everything out, see where we land. Also, I completely forgot about one tea that was in the drawer because it was on the counter and it was the one that I was drinking that day, which is the Jasmine Rose Petal Tea. So that is still in its little baggie, but I did find another one of these little jars. So I'm gonna just pop this in here, cut out the label, stick it on here like I did with the other ones. And um, this can go in the drawer as well. But let me take all of these out and we can take a look at all of them. check that one off the list. So there are actually, which I wasn't expecting, some empty and nearly empty jars in here, which would have been nice to know when I was decanting all of those teas, but it's okay. I can just do it again, free up some more space in the drawer because our coffee machine did come yesterday. First, let's go over the collection here and then I can start reorganizing again. A few empty jars here. This one actually has the label for the white tea with peach and jasmine flavor. This one used to be Monk's Earl Grey, which is one of my favorites. It's a black and green tea, obviously bergamot and vanilla. Really, really nice. It's a bit of a softer Earl Grey. This is another dried herb. Let's see. I feel when you dry kind of fresh herbs yourself, they tend to not last very long. And when I say very long, I mean years. <laughs> this is Peppermint tea with cocoa. It's a herbal blend from Ikea. They don't sell these anymore. But I used to really like Ikea's teas. They had a bunch of herbal loose leaf teas and they were all incredible. So this is, again, like two, three servings left. I need to just use that up and free up this jar. I have here um, Rooibos Cream Caramel which is a lovely, sweet rooibos, bits of caramel. <laughs> a really nice kind of desserty tea. This is Mona Lisa Smile, which is a green tea with rose petals and strawberries. It is so good. One of my top favorites. I have repurchased this one a few times, I think. 
Um, many of these, by the way, are from one of my favorite tea stores, which is called The Art of Tea. It's a store in Haarlem. And every once in a while, maybe once a year, we go there, stock up on teas. <laughs> Let me just go through their teas first, then maybe it makes a bit more sense. This is marzipan with nuts, uh, which is a rooibos tea with almonds, rose buds, um, rose leaves. It's very almondy. So good. Oh, so good. And a very desserty one. This is Fresh and Fitness, which is a very fresh, minty herbal blend. Again, has some strawberries as well. Very nice for summer. You can tell which ones are older because the labels fade. <laughs> this is uh, Chocolate Coconut Rooibos, also one that we have repurchased several times. It's a favorite in our household. It, yeah, it's a Rooibos with bits of cacao and coconut. <laughs> See, this is one of theirs. This is, oh, teardrop of peony. Oh my gosh, this is a white tea with um, peony. So fragrant, so floral, so amazing. And it's almost out. And I'm definitely, definitely repurchasing this one. Another firm favorite. This is the black champagne truffle tea that I mentioned before in this video. And it is so good. It doesn't smell or taste like champagne or truffle. Honestly, I'm not really sure why it's called that. It's very fresh. It kind of reminds me of those aloe vera drinks with the little squishy bits. <laughs> if you're not familiar with those. But yeah, it's, it's lime, again, rose petals. It's very fruity. It does contain some truffle aroma, but it blends really nicely with the rest of the ingredients. It's very, very unique and nice. I think that's all the ones we have from there are the ones that are labeled. Right now, in any case, here I have another rooibos. Well, it's obviously some kind of lemon, going by the smell. And I thought it was this one, but it obviously isn't because this one is labeled. This is a rooibos orange lemon lime. Yeah, lovely. We have lots of rooibos teas. They um, don't contain caffeine or like the tea equivalent of it, which means that I can have them all day long. I'm very sensitive to caffeine, so... Um, yeah, that's why I prefer kind of teas that aren't made of real tea leaves, <laughs> if that makes sense. Infusions. There we go. So, oh, this. I couldn't have this last year because I was pregnant, but I'm so excited to have this again this year. This is the Cabinet of Curiosities Winter Forest. And the Cabinet of Curiosities make amazing, very unique tea blends. And this one contains Sencha green tea, which is my favorite type. Uh, eucalyptus leaves, rosemary, thyme, juniper berries, red pepper berries, and pine needles. And oh my gosh, it is such a unique, incredible, it smells like Christmas. It is amazing. I can't wait to have this again. I have another one of theirs, and this is the uh, chocolate letter T. And this is a Sinterklaas special. Sinterklaas is a holiday in the Netherlands. Um, it's the festival of St. Nicholas. Part of the tradition is that um, children receive these, like th their initial made, of, made out of chocolate. And this is a tea inspired by that. So it's a black tea with bits of chocolate, um, corn flour, very nice, very fragrant chocolatey for sure. <laughs> Really, really nice. So then here I have a fruit tea of unknown origin. Oh yeah, I remember in my last tea declutter, I believe I kept two fruit teas and I'm not really that big on those anymore. I kept one summery fruit tea and one wintery one. And this is definitely the winter one because it smells like cinnamon and apple. <laughs> Whereas the other one was much more like berry centered. And then there is one with a tiny bit, again, one serving, I think, some kind of herbal tea. Okay, so we do have a few empty jars. Um, and since we can use more space in the tea drawer for coffee, oh my gosh, the heresy. <laughs> oh, maybe it would be nice to um, do those really big herbal teas in the bag so they don't really fit inside the drawer. I think that's probably the best, best course of action here. Let me do that. jasmine rose tea into one of these as well. 
Now all there's left to do is put them back in the cabinet and I think I would like to get some kind of organization system going again. It usually gets messed up pretty quickly as we just, you know, put the most recently used one in the front, but still, <laughs> I can try. <laughs> so what I think I'm gonna do is put all of the herbal teas on the top shelf. And then all the rest of them, I think I'm just gonna put those in by how frequently we use them. So the lesser used ones, maybe the seasonal ones in the back. So that'll be these two. Fruity and all the rest of them can just go in. Some stacks of Roybos teas. <laughs> I'm gonna stack the Mona Lisa Smile and the Jasmine Rose. These are both green teas with rose. <laughs> And then finally, it's champagne truffle and the peony one. There we go. The job is done and I'm very happy. I actually made much more space than I expected, got rid of more than anticipated, which is fantastic. And I have a bit of a better overview. I've had a bit of a refresh as to everything that we own and um, what teas to maybe bring into rotation a little bit more. Even been able to make space for a new coffee machine and coffee capsules. <laughs> so let me take you through a final tour of the situation now and what we ended up with. So this first drawer is now much more organized, much emptier. I've been able to fit all of our tea bag boxes in here, all of the tea that is in tins and little jars. Here we have smaller things and the teapot cozy. This one made it back in there, wasn't supposed to go back. Cinnamon sugar, and honey, we use this for coffee sometimes and this for teas occasionally. And I decided to put back my hot chocolate mix <laughs> since there was plenty of space. Cause here is now the coffee stuff. We have some instant coffee, it's mostly used for baking. And we have regular pour over, caffeine free pour over and then the cups for our new coffee machine. So I got some off brand ones actual Nespresso ones that came with the machine and we're gonna order more of those, which is why it's good that there's a lot more space in this drawer. We can expand on the coffee collection. So in the first cabinet next to this tall one, which is where the drawer is, is where we have the coffee machine. So this shelf is just the machine and then the syrups. We have caramel and pumpkin spice currently. And then of course we went through the loose leaf teas over in this corner and up there is where we keep our little teapot. There we go. used up. I'm gonna get through them. This time I really am. Thank you so much for being here and I hope to see you again in my next video next week. Have a lovely weekend and I will see you then. Bye.